remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again. And uh, a lot of you may have seen my retort to the State of the Union address a few nights ago. And uh, as a result of that, liberal talk show host locally here in St. Louis, Mark Bland. Has moderate been, talk uh, show host. Moderate liberal. It's all the same thing at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, he took some umbrage with some of the things I said. And didn't watch his video at all. Did not watch a single one, not one clip. I did not watch. And yet he's taking umbrage with my viewpoint on the State of the Union anyhow, which is interesting. But he wanted to come on this show and uh, challenge me in a couple of things, I suppose. Of course, I was eager and happy to allow that to happen. So no, wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's not steer the people wrong. I understand that you have this conservative blood running through you. You have this Republican aspect of your life where you want to take everything, spin it to make it look like somebody went out of the woodwork. I think if I remember correctly, you left a voicemail message for me and basically said, hey, would you like to come on America's Evil Genius and debate about about the uh, State of the Union. Oh, you're the one that and said I you want like, to come on here. But anyway, I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, I, I'll come on. I don't have a problem coming on the show. We, we've gone back and forth a couple of times the last few weeks about coming on, but we'll right. we'll we'll let that go. I, I don't but, need to be here. But anyhow, well, speaking of which, just so that some of my if my viewers may not know who you are, let's bring them up to speed. Sure, sure. Your name is Mark Bland. You've got a show called The Q, which yes, you can sir. find over at QNow.com. And it's also on a couple of radio stations. You've added a couple of stations in your lineup. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, actually, we just got done adding new syndication. We okay. have a, uh, we're on 1280 AM KYRO, which is WestplexNewsTalk.com. And we're also on uh, 1420 WINI out of uh, Southern Illinois, Carbondale, okay. Marion, that whole area down there. And that's uh, News Talk 1420 WINI.com. That's that's where you get it. But, and you, but you can always go to TheQNow.com. Absolutely. You've got stuff archived there, and right. uh, people can partake of whatever they wish. Great. Right. Okay. Well... To get this thing kind of started and set up here, let me kind of give you the impressions I had of the State of the Union address, and then from there, you know, let's kind of go from there and see your reactions to it and so forth. Should we just start off with all, like, just cutting all the BS off to the side and just go, I don't like Barack Obama, and we'll just start from there, because that's pretty much... No, because there's some very specific reasons why we don't like Barack Obama, and that's really the important part of this, specifically the speech, specifically the State of the Union address itself. Okay. Um, if you go back and listen to the speech, I'm sure you've heard it by now. I have heard you it. You have heard it. I was. And I watched it live. That's the most of it. I didn't get to see all of it live, but I caught the rest of it, you know, at a later Indeed. Time. So you've seen the, the major points. I've seen I've... everything that you're probably going to talk about. Good, good, good. As I listened to the speech, the impression I got was it was uh, the type of speech that I would uh, deem as a rainbows and unicorns kind of speech. Oh, really? Make it sound as though there's all these wonderful things we can do, and it'll just, the government will just make your life a a wonderful, wonderful panacea for the rest of your natural days. But even in, in putting together that illustration that he did, I thought there was a lot of contradictions, even within his own speech, Okay. to what he said. Sure. Firstly, on the economy. Obama was painting a picture of wanting to attract more jobs to our shores, which I think we all would like to do. Of course. But in the same speech, he advocated raising the minimum wage, raising taxes on the so-called wealthy, and closing so-called loopholes on investment income. And that struck me that three initiatives like that would result in the cost of doing business in America rising, while other nations are cutting their cost of doing business. So that doesn't make sense to me in terms of how you're going to attract more jobs to the economy well, while you're doing that. Do we understand, do we have an agreement between me and you that there is already a heightened sense of inflation financially across the United States that we haven't kind of reached? Like, we keep playing this game of we want to cut taxes and we want to try to make jobs and we want to do Like, I'm talking about on both sides of the fence. You know what I'm saying? Republican and Democratic. Like, we got this game that we're playing right now of this, we're going to do this to fix this problem, we're going to do this to fix this problem, we're going to do this to fix this problem, and blah, 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 blah. But we have this thing that's been slowly increasing over the last 25 to 30 years, which is inflation of our actual general financial status. And so we've gotten to a point where we're still playing the game way down here, but the cost to play the realistic game is way up here. And so we need to find a way so that these two can either come back together or we can get closer to this so that the numbers that we're talking about driving down here actually can affect the major inflationary status that we're in right now. Like gas is $4 a gallon. Like if you don't, if you haven't noticed when we're taping this gas a couple of days ago was $3 and 39 cents a gallon. It's now 367 in less than 48 hours back when we were going up 
And, mm-hmm. and, and Travis, you remember, like, I'm not, yeah, no, I'm not goofing around. But back when we were growing up, and we're in our mid 30s, yeah. mid late 30s, um, gas would raise five cents or a nickel. It would stay there for three or four weeks. Possibly. And then go, like, maybe down a couple cents, maybe go up another two cents, you know. But it never jumped 25 cents overnight and stayed there and then jumped 25 cents down the next day and then 30 cents up and then another 20 cents on top of that up and then back down. Like, it never did what it does now. It never in a million years. The way I look at gas nowadays is is kind of like uh, day trading, okay. how everything's moving constantly, minute by minute, yeah. hour by hour, up and down, up and down, all over the place. That's kind of how gas has become. It used to be a very stationary thing. Yeah, it was ninety eight cents. It went up to a dollar two, but it would stay at a dollar two for three weeks. Like yeah. it would just up and down every day. Like it wasn't one of those things. There's no constant. That's my point. There's no constant in our inflationary level is up here. What we're living by is down here. These two need to come, even if this comes down and this comes up, or this comes up all the way to meet up there, whatever, or this comes all the way down to meet down here. There needs to be this modicum, this middle. And so how, there, do you, how do you think government can, I don't want to say assuage those two things, I don't think it can, but how do you think government can, can make those things come closer? In other words, I would ask you this, what do you think is actually causing the inflation? I think it's just general life, man. I think, well, first off, you got a lot of private sector businesses, Mm -hmm. okay? Let's be honest. And and tell me if I'm wrong. Like, when you read something that you feel is completely wrong or I'm stating that is like you feel that I'm not really giving details about, please let me know. Yeah. And let everybody else out there know. But we live in a society where private sector business pretty much is about 75 to 80 5% 5% somewhere in that of the total businesses yeah. that run in the United States yeah. in the world, okay? So private sector businesses are the people that run their own companies, mm-hmm. dictate their own prices, free market economy style. That's literally what they do. So if you come in and you raise your rate or you move it up or like you ask for more money for whatever mm-hmm. service or whatever it is, then that's the price that you dictate at the time. Those are the then individuals, r- 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 right? But those are the pri- those are the individuals that are setting these price points. Okay, now that's totally within their right. Yeah, that's totally within their right. Yet at the same point, some of the things that these price points are being set on are are, 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 are stuff that you know I, I would think that across the board is is kind of a general consensus. General mm, understanding, like I if it's think. a niche thing, like like an HP computer or an Apple or an iPad or something like that. That's that's a that's a want. That's not a need. You know what I'm saying? Like those are those are niche, but those are niche things. The, the, here's, here's, are, here's, here's, where, here's where I think you're you're kind of going off the track. I was agreeing with you up until that very last, you up until that very last part, right? Because this consensus that you're talking about, yes. I don't think is natural. I don't think it. Are you human being? Uh, yes. Do you need wait, water? Wait, wait, wait. Let, let, let me finish what I'm saying first. Okay, that consensus is not automatically there, but I think that through the free market we arrive at that consensus. True. In other words, yeah, I would agree with that. Joe Joe, business owner out there wants to raise prices on whatever for whatever reason he wants to raise it. Maybe he's greedy, or maybe he has other factors coming into his cost that he has to account for. Maybe government regulation or taxes or any number of other things. Possibly. For whatever reason, he wants to raise his prices. Right. He can only get away with raising those prices if people will still buy what he's selling at the price he's raising it to. If someone else comes in and says, hey, Joe's trying to raise his prices, I want to take some of his business, I'm going to undercut him, Right. then I'm going to get a piece of that marketplace. Now, that's the way it used to be. That's not that way. It's anymore. not that way anymore. How no, so? because it used to be, and I've talked about this on my show. I think we've actually talked about this on my show before. It used to be a situation, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll use the gas station specifically okay. as an example because this is my famous example for them. Um, it used to be back in the day if this gas station was selling gas for ninety nine cents a gallon. Mm-hmm. Okay. The guy across the street was going to sell his for 97 cents a gallon mm-hmm. because he wanted to get more people to his place in his doors mm-hmm. to make more money for him. Yeah. It was called competitive pricing. Okay. That's literally what it was. So he would competitively price against the 99 cents guy at 97 cents. Therefore, more people would see the 97 and go, I want to be here. And that doesn't happen now? No. No, it really? doesn't. Really? Because well, I've, I've, heard, I've heard a number of... I've, wait, I've heard a number... You said you wanted me to... That's my place. show. I've, I've heard a number of different situations. I've seen a number of different situations, even in this town of St. Louis, where gas stations will make different specials and say, hey, we're selling gas at this certain rate this day to get business. Now, now I think where it breaks down a little bit in the specific... It switches, but it switches in the 90s. It switched to the late to it's 90s. to what? It switched to the idea of nowadays... If this gas station is selling gas at 99 cents and this station across the street is selling gas at 97 cents, they're not seeing the same fallover on the gas price as they used to see. 
So as opposed to the, the, the thought process of I'm going to leave it at 97 cents because that's cheaper than 99, more people would want it, they're not seeing that follow through anymore. There's not people that are naturally coming across the street. Now what they're seeing is, is oh, this, this company, and I'm just using this as an example, this company sells sodas inside and they mm -hmm. sell this inside and you know, like a quick trip, you know, yeah. they got all kinds of things going on inside. More people are still naturally going over there. So as opposed to continuing the idea of our main purpose is being a gas station, we're going to try to stay competitively priced. What they do is they go well we don't have as much we're, we're not we're not going to be able to add hot dogs and sodas and all that crap like they do across the street and we're not going to you know even if we keep our prices at 97 cents they're still not coming here because they want hot dogs and sodas over there so we're going to raise our prices we're not going to let you beat us you're not going to make 99 cents you're not going to make two cents more per person than i am screw that no 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 no, no. you're going to have to deal with me selling my gas at 99 cents also that's and that's that, 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 that second station you mentioned though in your example generally speaking especially these days and you all out there can see this in your own town I'm sure that second station is going to go out there and start making hot dogs themselves and uh, say, oh, of course they will and there's nothing have... wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that but there is a mentality that when, it, when push comes to shove and it's time to cross that bridge fine that's fine to walk into a situation with your business ethics off the top end like that that you're not going to let someone else across the street make five cents more than you so you're going to raise your price on purpose and then that guy raises the price and you raise your price to keep up and you just keep doing this up and up and up you're not trying to competitively price anymore what is you're just a, trying to do is you're just trying to beat the guy across the is street is it a case or, let me ask you this question is it a case where oh i'm just not going to let this guy make five cents more than me or is it a realization that wait a second this guy is charging five cents more and is able to get it so am I doing myself a disservice by not charging? You know what's really if funny? I I, I've come to a realization, Travis, over the last few months, uh, especially since the election, mm -hmm. of m many discussions with uh, right-wing nutjobs and crazy people. I'm proud to take that label, by the way. Uh, a, lot, a lot of crazy individuals and stuff like that. I've come to realize, in many cases, this gray area where we're constantly going back and forth about on different policies and subjects and ideas, mm -hmm. uh, we're both right. In many cases, there's 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 two thought processes that, yeah, there are some people that are in the, the boat of what you just said, that, hey, I'm going to start selling hot dogs in this. Yeah. I'm going to, yeah, that, that's a good idea. I'm learning from that template, mm -hmm. and I'm going to better my business. There's also quite a few people that also think from my point of view, I'm not going to let that guy. I'm just not going to let that guy. It all depends on who, how you were brought up and how you think. You know, everybody's got a different, you know, style. So for every gas station that does, I'm going to try to, to be competitive with hot dogs. There's a guy that's like, screw that. I just don't want him to get ahead of me. There are, it, it, both people are right. There's examples on both sides of the board. Well, regardless us. of whatever case, whatever the motivation might be for raising your gas price. I know we're sure. kind of going off on uh, yeah, let's get, let's get back yeah. to what you want. I mean, the, the point of it is, for whatever reason, people are going to raise their gas prices or raise their prices on whatever commodity. There are situations where the government comes in and essentially adds cost to you and you then have to take that into account with with your business things like i say with raising the the um, raising the minimum wage raising taxes those things like that those things have to be accounted for so when i hear obama say that he wants to attract more jobs it seems to me that those actions would make it more difficult to do so when you've got other nations that are saying hey you don't have to pay as much of a wage here you don't have to give as many benefits here in a weird way i've got a story for you okay i got a friend of mine who recently lost his job okay okay not lost his job whatever he filed for unemployment okay. okay and so basically he came over he's he's having some trouble with the unemployment situation and a lot like you he's like it's my money basically i paid yeah. into it for all these years i want to get my money back out of this yeah. you know what i'm saying and i'm unemployed right now i need my money back you know what i'm saying but something happened there's like a glitch in the system or whatever and basically he's not getting paid right now for unemployment the okay. way he should like any other human being does. And I agree with him, okay? But it's really funny because, you know, you talk about entitlements and you talk about this mm -hmm. and that, and this kind of falls into that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, a, a minimum really. wage is kind of an entitlement to an no, extent. Not. Like, you, not, 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 do you agree that a minimum wage should be raised 10 bucks? No. Okay, but why not though? Because I don't believe we should have a minimum wage at all. Okay, why not? But why, why, why do you think Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me clarify something real quick. When you're using the word entitlements, entitlements means a very specific thing. Okay. Entitlements means entitlement spending or what they call mandatory spending, which is things like Social Security, right, okay. Medicare, and Medicaid, which, and not to bore everybody with that explanation of it. No, no, no. He's right. The, the, the number, you know, the number is determined by fiat and not by a budget or anything like that. So my mistake, I, I was playing that definition from a different point of view. I apologize. He's completely right. Entitlement spending is on spending, not to specifically the idea of how a company should run itself okay. and what they should spend.